Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Frick. This is the OpenStack Silicon Valley event, OpenStack SV. If you want to join our CrowdChat, go to crowdchat.net slash OpenStack SV. That's the hashtag. Log in and join the conversation. So it's a Twitter recorder. It records all the conversations and also includes LinkedIn and Facebook. Our next guest is uh, Avas Namat, who's the co-founder and CEO of Plum Grid here at the show. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for inviting me, John. We really love to have entrepreneurs on the, on the queue because one, it's really hard to do startups. <laughs> Two, uh, it's a great opportunity in this growing marketplace of cloud. So you guys are not just a startup, you've had through multiple rounds of funding, well-funded. Tell, tell the crowd out there what you guys do and why are you here and what's the opportunity for you guys within the OpenStack ecosystem? So let me give you, thanks for inviting me, John, and thanks for uh, inviting me, Jeff, here. Uh, let me just give you an overview of you know, uh, who we are as a company, right, and what is it we do over here. So, a uh, little bit on a history. Uh, Plum Grid is a three and a half years old company. We started in 2011. We are venture backed, uh, raised around $29 million in financing, and we have uh, you know, customers who have deployed our solutions in production at this point in time, Swisscom being one of them. Um, <clears throat> uh, we provide networking solutions for cloud, right? So, when you're trying to build a cloud, you run into issues. First, first issues when people are building OpenStack Cloud today is they can't find enough trained resources. The second biggest issue, if you ask them, is networking. So we provide networking solution, software only, that get deployed within an OpenStack environment with Neutron, right, and provide all those services and features that are needed to make a cloud production grade. So is it within right. the cloud or to the cloud when you talk about so, the networking? So, so when we talk about uh, you know, our customers, we actually sell to cloud builders. Okay. Right? People who are building the cloud, right? Not to the cloud user, right? So we provide the capability uh, whereby we get deployed with an OpenStack distribution, right? So let's say take an example of uh, say Red Hat, right? So Red Hat OpenStack 5.0 with RHEL 7, when you deploy that, you build that cloud, you need to now start providing these networking services that Neutron provides, right? This is Neutron uh, networking, uh, distributed switching, distributed load balancing, with high availability, security, scale. We deploy our solution within that environment, and that's where we provide this capability that we call virtual domains, right? The ability to create these logical data center network environments directly from the Horizon cons console with the functionality and features above and beyond what Neutron offers. And what were they doing before you came along? Uh, well, uh, you, as you know, this OpenStack has been in, uh, you know, uh, in, in a very rapid deployment phase, right? Some people right. had gone in and deployed early, uh, early releases, right, with basic OVS based solutions with very, very simple services, right, okay. and not necessarily with the uh, with the high availability, scale, and the speed of automation that is now being demanded of OpenStack Cloud, right? So, many people did it DIY, do it yourself, right? right? right. Or uh, quite a few customers who actually deployed it at scale used uh, the VMware NSX, which is a nice acquisition prior to it getting acquired by, by VMware, right? So we ran into uh, quite a few customers who have de you know, scale deployments with NSX who are looking for solutions above and beyond the capabilities of what NSX offers today. Excellent. So why are you here? What's, what's, uh, what's new here at OpenStack Silicon Valley? Oh, uh, this, is, uh, this is the show, this is the place, right? This is where <laughs> all, all the action is, right? This is it. So we have, uh, we are an OpenStack company, right? We provide them the, one of the, the critical components within, uh, within the OpenStack ecosystem, right? We have been in there for quite some time, right? We have uh, you know, our code uh, upstream and you know, contributed into into the Neutron. Uh, we have um, not been very visible, right, in, in the past, right, and now I think after three and a half years with referenceable customers and production deployments that people have done at uh, very high performan uh, performance levels and to a, to a scale that CIOs are looking for, I think we have a role to play. That's why we are here, uh, to meet our customers and meet our partners. 
So talk about the challenges that you see out there that, that you're eyeing as an entrepreneur. Obviously now you've got big funding. You see how many employees you have? 70? We have around 70 Around 70, yeah. it's a big, big company, well, growing company. Um, the landscape is shifting. Obviously OpenStack is growing, growing pains. We've heard from Jonathan Bryce earlier. Um, we were just at VMworld, so we know the issues going on at the network layer. Yeah. What's going on in networking? Is that really where the battleground is or is PaaS still the, still the, the, the next focus area? Because it's very clear from all the thought leaders, the building blocks are not yet all set. Right. And that's where we are in the state of this evolution. So, so I, the, the way we see it is, 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 there is there is a layer, right? There are challenges in how you build a cloud, right? And then there are challenges in how you use a cloud, right? And then there's interrelationship between the two as to you know, how do we actually go ahead and build a cloud versus how do you use the cloud? So when you look at um, uh, OpenStack uh, uh, you know, networking and you look at PaaS, say Cloud Foundry, right? Um, uh, it's, it's a kind of a workload that runs on top of OpenStack. We have you know, real customers who have actually uh, gone ahead and you know, put it in an internal uh, limited deployment environments where they're running Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack, right? But this, as soon as they tried to do that, the networking broke down, right? Because the manner in which Cloud Foundry Bosch would actually want to orchestrate the underlying infrastructure and services reachability through the network, right? It is not baked into the blueprints, right? And that is where the capability of what's underneath the cloud comes into play. And th those are the things that need to be solved. So I would say challenges are on both directions, one in the component side of things, as Jonathan pointed out, as to what are those components that are going to get used. And I think that's where a modular architecture works better, whereby each vendor that differentiates and can take care of a specific customer requirement can come in and provide that, that, that module better than the other, and others who don't need that don't have to use it, right? But more importantly on the top, yeah. from the past standpoint, it gets used, there's interaction that needs to be figured out. Well, let's talk about what you guys are offering in there, because obviously it's a, it's a very delicate landscape right now because there's a lot of innovation at the SDN. We were just talking about at the telcos, NFV is hot. So, you know, all this stuff's happening there. What are you guys offering into that network area? So in we terms provide, of your products, what value, and how do you talk to your customers when they say, whoa, I don't want to do anything, why should I do something now? It's all being settled. How do you answer to that? So, so we, we, we provide an OpenStack networking suite, right? This is a suite of, you know, software suite that gets deployed within and with a OpenStack distribution. So we also provide a, a you know, certified in integrations with commercially available OpenStack distributions today, right? For example, we are certified for Red Hat OpenStack 4.0, and you can use us, you can you know, get it from there, from with Piston 3.0, and with the, you know, pretty soon with 3.5, you'd see that you know, we are integrated, we are certified. But up-leveling it to the application layer, right? Whereby, you know, we have now application blueprints, right? The whereby if you want to run you know, Pivotal Cloud Foundry on top of you know, Piston 3.0 with something with Plumgrid 3.5.x, if this particular blueprint is followed, right, then you can actually get your Cloud Foundry cloud up and running instead of a six months long project or a three months long project in three days, right? And you can get started using all those services that you really want to use the cloud for right out of the box versus figuring out a who, who is the networking guy I need, I need to call, what network hardware do I need to buy, right? Is it integrated or not, right? What are the run, you know, issues that we're trying to run? So essentially, we're bringing the value proposition of don't waste six months to, as, you know, to, to fund a project as to how to go build a cloud. Build a cloud in, you know, in, a, in a very short amount of time and start using it right away. We take care of all the networking challenges in between. Right. What do you see as the developer state of the union, if you will? Developers want code, infrastructure is code. The container trend has shown that Atomic and Docker both have massive traction with developers. Because app developers want infrastructure to just be dynamic. So how does that trend relate to your, your business? Is it disrupting you? Are you disrupting that? Are you complementary? Uh, very important trend for us, extremely important. Uh, and Docker is something that, uh, and container is something which, where we see the future of virtualization, right? It's very complementary to us because networking services are provided to instances, whether those instances happen to be a physical server that hosts a database and that needs to be orchestrated with you know, OpenStack, whether it happens to be a virtual machine that gets launched in, in the KVM hypervisor or gets launched within a, a vSphere environment, or if that happens to be a Docker container that gets launched, right, within a, uh, uh, you know, on top of a, uh, of, of a Linux operating system, right. right? There are going to be application assets. Some of them would live within contained Dockers, some of them would live within uh, physical servers, and VM, we provide those services today. So we have support for, uh, you know, Docker containers, we have support for LXE containers, we have support for VM, we have support for 
physical networking all within this infrastructure of uh, OpenStack clouds. So talk a little bit about the, cu the customer perspective. You mentioned you've got live customers in production, um, that number's growing. How, how are their attitudes changing? How's the adoption on the customer side and within their IT side starting to transform over the last couple years? We've been covering this space for a couple years now. Is it more accepting? Is it getting easier? Are, are they excited about it? Is it, is it moving beyond POCs into, into real production? Is it, are they still crawling? Are they walking? And when will they start to run? Uh, so this is, you know, I would say, you have to look at multiple silos within the industry, right? There are some fat silos that are on fire. Customers are you know, way beyond POCs, they are in production, they are in second generation, third generation, you know, uh, you know, designs at this point in time, and they're fully committed behind, you know, OpenStack, right? And, and who then, are those customers? What the, what so, the, or are they a group? What defines them? Give me, an, 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 I'd give you three, you know, verticals, you know, okay. for example, right? First vertical is, you know, telco and cloud service providers, right? Pure play cloud service providers wanted to build an IAS service, right? Right, right. Moving on to building fast services. Telcos who are thinking of building infrastructure to deliver IT or application services out of it, or NFV, which is networking or connectivity services out of it. Second segment I can give you is retail, you know, for example. All retail. those, retail. Oh, retail, retail, retail right? Retail. All the retail guys, right, who are never going to host their uh, online stores on top of Amazon Web Service because of, you know, company competition reasons, right? right? right. They need, they're building their own clouds, they're taking into production, second or third, you know, generation, there's a long flurry list of that. Third one is media and entertainment, right? They have digital assets, they want to monetize these digital assets through a, a infrastructure that they control at this point in time, right? Um, and so on and so forth, right? Then there's traditional enterprises that actually are, are, uh, are, are not necessarily uh, spending money to the tune of tens of millions of dollars, but they're all dipping their toes and trying to figure out where does this all go and how can we use it for, uh, for our internal IT and application you know, consumption. Okay. Vas, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I'll give you the final word. Uh, share with the folks out there, what is going on in your, in your mind about OpenStack? Share with them, for the folks that aren't deep in the community, they see the buzz, they see the, the, the conversations around OpenStack. Why is OpenStack important, and why do you think it will be successful? So, uh, you know, OpenStack uh, have come a long way. You know, OpenStack you know, started almost four or five years ago when there used to be a lot of competition around in terms of how we do things. This is, has turned out to be the consensus project uh, that everybody is you know, behind, and uh, this is something which becomes, has the potential to become the operating system layer for the data center, right? Um, we see it as, as, as something which is, uh, as, as an enterprise CIO, you have to take a look at it, uh, you have to use it in, in future, it's something that is coming. Not, know, just, not just enterprise, telcos. Even in as telcos, right? Even software as a service, you know, this is the base substrate layer upon which all the all the, uh, the software as service gets built, right? Uh, it provides the benefit for the agility, automation, and the cost, uh, the TCO objectives that an enterprise CIO have. But most importantly, most importantly, if you're looking for time to revenue, right? By building an infrastructure that is entirely in your, op in your control, and you control your own destiny, and you want to do it right, and you do want to do it fast, OpenStack is the way to go. How does Cloud Foundry fit into OpenStack? Uh, I would say uh, Cloud Foundry is an application. Uh, the way we view it, that you know, runs on top of OpenStack. Uh, it, the OpenStack provides it is all the infrastructure services that a cloud foundry has, you know, would require. Um, and I think that's a that's a nice, happy, uh, you know, coordination point between the two. As a platform, as a service, as a platform layer. service that resides as an application on top of an infrastructure as a service provided by okay. OpenStack. Breaking it down, this is why I love getting the entrepreneurs because they're close to the action. They got their companies to run, but also they're in a very fluid environment here. Um, CEO of Plum Grid here, co-founder. Um, great opportunities, but also <laughs> a lot of shifting, uh, a lot of shifting uh, plates, as they say. A lot of earthquakes going on in that this market, certainly in California. We are live in Silicon Valley. This is the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break.